have a few minutes, I'm going to eat into our lunch hour and make you rush towards indigestion um, by having a shorter lunch hour by opening up to a few questions. Does anyone have some questions for Tom and Stan? Yes. Um, Simon, thank you for having me. Um, you mentioned the bad language, and I noticed this. Everyone is struggling how to express the art of writing into language. And, uh, you know, because of the academia, we have to. Yes. And you said there are enemies, which you, you said you were going to talk about those enemies. Ah, oh, oh, yes, thank you. I'm sorry. Um, that. So, so I, I think I said that, but I didn't actually enunciate that that was what it was that I was saying. Um, what I mean is that when we use the language that we used to use to talk about these things that we do, we often inadvertently subscribe to paradigms that are actually opposed to what it is we're trying to say. So when, you know, when we talk about uh, you know, the, 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 I have this creative idea in my mind and then I make it. You're suddenly, you, you're just enacting hylomorphism whether you want it to or not. So what do we do when we write this language? <laughs> uh, I think that we essentially have to develop a new, a, a, a new language. And it is beginning, right? And I think the thing to do is to read some of the key papers in, in the various new genres of cognition, see the way that they're framing the problem. Can you suggest a couple? Oh, um, yeah, I can suggest, uh, this is a, this is a very good one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually say that, say that only half in jest, because I wrote this book specifically for this kind of community, and, and the middle part of the book is basically a kind of primer on the new uh, modalities of cognition. The first part of the book is the history of computational and, and biological theories of cognition, and the last part is about art practice in, in viewed through the, 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 that, that, those new paradigms of cognition. So, um, oh, um, there are many others. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So sorry, Richard, I had the same question. Sorry, so, great success of English language, like it or like it, is its ability to take on new words from God only knows where. Are you convinced that some of the ideas <coughs> that you're trying to suggest don't already exist in a word form in one of the many languages that already exist on the planet? No, I'm not suggesting that at all. In fact, I think they probably exist in different um, modalities of, of English language discourse. And, they, um, and I think it's a really fascinating study, like a cross-cultural study, um, a cross-linguistic study of the way these different kinds of concepts are addressed in different languages, specifically with different kinds of philosophical backgrounds. Absolutely. Well, this was suggesting that in, in the languages of the NAA. Yeah. Trish, and then yeah. Henry, and then... Uh, I was just oh. thinking that, um, you know, language still has to form an idea, if you like, and the link between language and metaphor is very great. I wondered whether language was an inactive practice. Oh yeah, well, I'm sure you're right. I mean, and, and that is when when we start looking at, for instance, Pickering's distinction between the performative and the and, and the representational. It's quite clear that certain kinds of language practices can be performative, and certain kinds of um, uh, uh, um, uh, performative practices contain representations and representational qualities. So. Again, it's it's complex and it's subtle, but I you know, occupy it. Yeah, I agree. And there is literature on uh, language as a tomb in practice rather than as as something of meaning. So yeah, there's lots of literature in action about that. Mm -hmm. Did you want to comment on that? The only thing I'll say is is um, uh, from an average, Aboriginal point of view, um, our our language is um, distinctly. Um, uh, I guess basic in a way to describe it, and it's pur purposely like that because we use um, a lot of body language, we have sign language that we interpret things, and um, a lot of gestures. And, and uh, as I said, we use visual literacies, which are far more important than than the words of concepts. We have 
there are throughout Australia there are what called trade routes or trade pathways, and within those pathways there is a common language that is used within trading um, a long time ago with Aboriginal people. Um, but it, and again, they were very simple dialects for that purpose. Hmm. We're going to go to Bond and then I think we'll have to This might be a rhetorical question, please, <laughs> but you, you mentioned this sentence. Why has so many thousands of years of knowledge been discarded? And um, I was thinking about that question uh, when Simon was speaking. And uh, I, I just want you to comment on it, but I find it really interesting that relationship where Simon is talking about what we have to invent a new language. And I'm wondering, this invention of this new language, is that really going to solve the problem? that we have against, but I'd like to hear you sort of in the face there. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it's quite astonishing, you know, when, when you think about the, the question, um, why were Aboriginal philosophies, um, theories, um, just put aside um, through colonisation? And, and that gets back to, um, on, a, on a world scale, where the, the native was considered um, primitive and the knowledge was primitive and the, the white man was, um, uh, you know, far superior. Yet there, there are so many things on a daily scale that I just continually question. You know, uh, just off the top of my head here is that, you know, the latest toothpaste has this new ingredient called charcoal. Now, we, we invented that. We use charcoal, and that's how we cleaned our teeth. Um, and the, the new invention that, you know, um, uh, certain oils or certain um, indigenous plants have these huge high properties, um, and they've just discovered them. And I think, I knew that. Um, you know, and, and it's, it, it's this different validation of an imbalance within knowledges and, and um, it, it's, um, it, you know, when I look at a lot of traditional healing practices, for example, and I didn't, you know, get the time to mention them all, it just amazes me that people are looking for that. People are looking at, like, just now, gut health. And I think, it's like she is. And, and, you know, I've been, I, I work, used to work a lot with kids with Asperger's and autism. And I started to look at gut health with them um, probably um, 20, 25 years ago. And um, no one was really interested mm -hmm. until a non-Indigenous researcher came up with this. And, and so it was more important. Sure. I, I, so, so, I don't want to hug it, but there's a sentence that Simon said. The intelligences of the arts are simply inexplicable within the terms of the cognitive historic time. Yes. And, and I was comparing that to Liz's sentence and wondering where the hell do we then go with that? Well, do you want me to address that? Uh, I, so, so just to be clear about the language I'm using, the cognitivist paradigm is a term which refers to the mid 20th century paradigm of cognition, which is fundamentally computationalist, internalist, and representationalist. That paradigm, I think, has been increasingly established to be a wrong idea. So um, the new approaches to cognition have their own neologisms to describe, sometimes they borrow from Buddhist thought or from some thought of some other culture, right? But when we use terms like inactive or, or you know, distributed cognition, you know, we're, we're creating a label for something which we can then discuss as a thing, right? And, 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 and critique. I'm just wondering if the same thing isn't happening in this process of the indigenous language disappearing. Mm -hmm. This other language disappearing. We're just finding a new word to represent the same thing over and over 
bring it in. I'm just curious about that. Yeah. that I'm sorry, I was Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry to compress. Yes, thank you. 